Welcome on back, Faithful, to our final build video for our Mark VI Halo 4 helmet. Ah, I know. Been a long time in the making, this video. But we are finally, finally, finally going to be finishing up this here helmet. This is, as I said, the Mark VI Halo 4 helmet. There's a side back front for you here. This is the one that we've been working on right here. And over the last couple of videos, we did everything from building these cheek sections here, the front and wraparound pieces, as well as these back side uh, pieces there. These are the ones that we did for the last video. Now we're gonna go into building out the, I guess, back base of the skull portion here, and then the neck piece that comes in right behind it, and right below it. So the video we're gonna be showing you today is going to be dealing with this section, right there hopefully you can see that pretty well going to be this complex piece here there's a lot going on with that one piece right there and then this piece that tucks in right below it which attaches into the back rear sections as well and helps to curve the whole helmet around all right now i have pre-trimmed a few of my pieces already i'll show you the cuts i've done here i've done just a little bit of an edge cut there however i didn't go right to the very top edge i went about an eighth of the way from the top edge of this foam here, about an eighth of an inch back, and I did an angle cut about 45 degrees there. So if you don't know what an edge cut is, or a what I call a trench cut or a V cut, pretty much look at any of my other videos. You'll find it right in the very beginning. I'm not gonna show that here because I've already trimmed all my pieces to uh, get started already. So bear that in mind. Also, if you're planning to build along with this video, I would encourage you, if you don't have it already, go inside the info section of this video right below download peppercore viewer and peppercore designer also there's a dropbox link which has all the armor templates that i'm that i made this entire suit of armor from in that dropbox link it's all the halo 4 mark 6 templates there they are pdo files they're only viewable inside peppercore viewer or designer so i've had that question a lot in the last couple of weeks I'm not going to keep answering it so hopefully if you're seeing this video right now you'll have the wherewithal to go down below check the info section and not ask me um Anyway, also there's a link down there as well for Pretzel's Locker, a phenomenal tool where you can find a ton, a ton, a ton of other Halo files as well if you want to get into Pepacora or Evacora. There's a lot on there, so check it out. Also, there's the uh, Angel Legend fan page. Love to see what you're working on. Please post your photos there to me. Okay, so without further ado, as I said, we're building out this back section right here. For those of you just joining me, my name is Angel Legend, a.k.a. Eric Rolon, and I love making me some Halo armor. So hopefully I'm helping you guys out with your Halo cosplay endeavors as well. Okay, so jumping right in here. If you notice the back here, it has this little curve in the very, very middle of it, as well as these kind of gentle curves on the side here. Just real, real easy little curve there. So we're going to go ahead and do all the curves first just to make sure that we have our pieces rounded out the way that they need to be. And they're not gonna be crazy, crazy curves, just, just enough. Now for this piece here, it's gonna be shaped just like this. You're gonna see a lot of dot dash, dot dash lines, a lot of dot, dot, dot lines. A lot is going on with this upper uh, base of the skull piece here. For the dot dash, dot dash lines, that means they're being folded up. For the dot, dot, dot lines, it means they're folded down. So you're gonna have a lot of little crinkle areas, kind of like that there where it's gonna fold in and then uh, down on itself. Same with over here as well. Now you add that curve inside there and it's gonna make this entire piece have this unique looking wrap around shape to it. But we're gonna go ahead and take our heat gun, heat this side up here, that side in the middle, give them all just a gentle bend. This is a cheap Wagner heat gun. You can find it at pretty much any hardware store, about 25 bucks. And also, if you haven't figured it out, we're working with EVA foam. This is half inch. All right. Just get in here and you're gonna bend it a little further than you think you're gonna need to. Give it a curve about like that. Knowing full well that it's going to pry itself out just a little bit more. Let's say the front and side sections of your helmet are kind of a little wide. This will help to tuck it and curve it back in around the back of your head. So it has this real nice curve to it. Uh, we're going to be attaching our pieces today using a Loctite 5 second super glue. It is my 
favorite stuff to work with. Uh, word of warning, you will get it on your fingers working with UVA foam. It is just a hazard of the material, but it is the best stuff. Um, all right. And we're just going to match this, this curve on this side here. I know I already said officially that this is going to be the last um, build video for this helmet. We will be doing one more video on this helmet specifically, and it's just going to be um, on trimming your visor and getting it set inside your helmet, figuring out where the, uh, the border on it needs to be to fit inside that little um, goggle section of your helmet. And it can work for a lot of other Halo helmets. The only ones probably that it won't work for is gonna be the EVA helmet and going to be the um, ODST or hell jumper, if you will, because theirs is, has a weird little section uh, into the middle and kind of folds down a little strangely. But for a regular helmet like this, I just use a motorcycle visor. So I'm gonna show you how I go about masking off, finding my areas, and then cutting all that. Okay, so we have our little curved wing sections here. We're gonna curve the middle here and give it a bend about like that really kind of dome out this here. Again, we're not going crazy hard with it, just enough to give a little bit of an extrusion. All right, just both thumbs behind and bend it about like that. The EVA foam, if you're working with half inch like I am, is pretty thick and it will try and fight you, so just be aware of that. You're gonna have to fight it right back. Um, for anyone who is making their helmet as well, know that I have scaled this helmet down by 10%. Now, none of the files inside that Dropbox, none of those files are scaled. You're going to have to scale them yourself. So if you're opening up this helmet file there, know that you need to open it up inside Pepecore Designer and scale it down 10% if you want it to fit your head. If you don't, you're going to end up looking like a bobblehead because that helmet will be enormous. It's enough to almost fit two people's heads inside of it. Um, as is kind of the, the way with sizing EVA, excuse me, um, Epicor files and Pepicor files, it is just going to come down to the individual person. There is no um, one size fits all kind of a thing. You're going to have a little bit of trial and error in figuring out how to make it all come together, but I have every confidence in you. So make it happen. Okay, and... So, as I showed you before, I've already pre-cut all these little areas. If it's a dot dash line, it's going to be folding up. If it's a dot dot line, it's folding down. So mark your foam accordingly beforehand, and then get in there, start making those V-angle cuts so that you can fold the piece together like this. Now this side here, I've got about a quarter of an inch gap cut there on both sides. I'm going to go just a little bit deeper with it because I want it to fold just a little bit easier. It's kind of fighting me a bit right now. So I'm just going to take a tiny little bit out of there. Just just a little, little bit. We're gonna go, instead of it being a quarter of an inch, it'll be just slightly bigger than a quarter of an inch there. So probably only gonna be taking about like a 30 second of an inch off of there. To do that, you need a really, really sharp box cutter blade there. So make sure that your blade is good and sharp. Snap it off if you have to. Get a fresh one in there. And there we go, much better, okay. Same thing on this side here. And you may have already trimmed yours to the right size already. So if you did, then pardon me while I just adjust mine real quick. I would encourage you guys, if you're going to build along with me, do all your trimming beforehand. That way, when you come back through to actually start putting this bad boy together, it'll just go like that. You're not gonna be fighting with it and having an issue. I need to widen this one up just a little bit as well. <laughs> <laughs> and um, for anyone who's never tried building any kind of EVA foam armor before, I would recommend starting with either the shoulder or the bicep or even one of the calf pieces because they're on a simpler scale. Um, they're kind of more, the shoulder is a flatter piece there which has some gentle curves to it which will give you enough of an understanding of how you're working with your heat gun and with EVA foam as well that by the time you start getting to these more complex pieces like the forearm or the helmet, you're gonna have a way more solid base than if you were to start with the helmet right away. 
I would hate for you guys to get frustrated on the very first piece and then stop. So try something easier first, get acquainted with the material if you've never worked with it before, and then start rolling into the heavier bits. Okay, so I just got a few little scrap pieces here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run some glue down this seam here, fold it up, hope the glue bubbles out a little bit, and then smooth that glue in with our little smoother piece here. And as this glue is gonna bond on a molecular level with this foam here, we're just gonna spread the glue thin along the seam to ensure that it coats properly. So if you need to, press in, use the table as leverage, hold it, and then spread that glue right across that seam. It'll give a real, real clean look there. And you're gonna hold it for just a few seconds. Probably, hmm, it is a five second uh, liquid. For EVA foam though, because it's gonna try and push back against you, you might have to hold it a few seconds longer. That's about six, seven seconds there. So we got that side done, we'll just move on to this one here. And you're just running a gent, just a little bead of it right down along that upper edge. You don't need a whole ton of it. A little bit of this goes a long way. Again, I'm using the table just to hold it down here. And by the way, I hope you guys are having an awesome week. I know I am. My wife Kylie and I. Um, many of you may know that we're full-time um, voice actors we just got a few new gigs started up this week so very exciting stuff all right allows me to keep doing my hobby okay perfect for that middle there now we're just gonna keep following along both sides bend it down from the back there same thing here we're gonna have this cool little nubby section right for the very back there gonna be right about here the very back of the skull now the inside here um, you don't really have to worry too much about what the inside's gonna look like there. Still though, you wanna smooth that glue in just to help it dry quicker, and it disperses along both sides there, so it kind of melds the pieces together, marries the two of them. Hopefully you can see how I'm working this here. And awesome, there we are. Same thing on this side. All right. I saw a few posts, a few of you, I understand, are working on getting a costume put together for your next convention, which is coming up shortly here. So I do hope that in finishing up this video, you are able to see the way this all comes together and get that bad boy done. So kudos to you for even taking a stab at it. I'm not gonna lie, I spent a lot of hours looking at some of these templates for this particular suit of armor, and they are a beast. So hopefully I am saving you guys some time. All right, there we go almost already shaped just the way we need it to. Now looking at it right now, if I were to pinch these in, it's gonna be a little a little wonky. It's gonna be very way too tight, which is why we're gonna be folding these outside wings in on both sides of it. And I'm actually going to widen this one out a little bit as well. Look at that. Just making all the, uh, the adjustments on the fly today. Hey, this is, sometimes you gotta do this. You just gotta get inside there, notice what the problem is, and fix it. And honestly, some of the some of the coolest results I've got out of doing armor have actually come out of happy accidents. So don't feel bad if you've got to modify a piece. But sometimes it looks cooler than what it was originally intended to be. So again, a little bit of glue here. And fold this in. Beautiful. Oh, it's going to be an awesome seam. You can see I'm just smoothing that glue in. Just kind of massaging it into place there. Let that piece grab a hold of it. And whammo. While I'm here, I'm just gonna stick this one down as well. Now this one, when I put it into the helmet, it's gonna all kind of open up a little bit. But it's okay, we still want this piece stuck right where it's gonna be. Let's fold it in. Let that hold for a second. And bam, here we are. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, I like it. All right. Now, again, just mirroring it on this side. Now, we're using a heat gun right now for our EVA foam. Just be aware if you're using it indoors. Um, you don't have to heat the foam to the point that you see it start to melt. 
you don't want to melt your foam at all because it's going to release a gas that you don't want to breathe in. It is, in fact, toxic. Um, so if you want to be able to work with your EVA foam indoors, just don't heat it up to that degree. Otherwise, work outside if you're going to be going that gung-ho with it. Just needs a little bit. All right. And on the back side here. And I usually cut, gosh, six, seven of these little smoother pieces just out of scrap that I have lying around from when I cut out a big template like this here. So save a few of your little scrappy pieces and just use them for this here. If you if you are in fact gonna build using five second super glue, it goes a whole lot quicker. Uh, it's way easier than having to sit here with a hot glue gun and just wait and wait and wait and wait. Now, I do use a hot glue gun, though. Set it for low heat if you have a dual um, heat gun or just buy a low heat gun. Don't set it for high because it stays viscous way too long. You're going to want to come back through and reinforce every single seam from the back side with hot glue. Obviously, we can't reinforce these top seams there because we can't get in from behind. And since this shape is going to be totally closed and this is a pinnacle piece, I'm going to go ahead and reinforce this right now because I do not want these seams popping open. The... Uh, the beauty of working with hot glue is, say you're out in the sun and a seam does pop, usually the seam will pop open pretty cleanly. The glue will just kind of pull away from the piece that it's on, and you can kind of see where it goes and lay it back down usually, and it's fine. However, if you're going to be using um, Loctite Super Glue, since it bonds on that level with your foam, it'll actually rip a chunk out when it tears. It's not going to tear even, and it's not just going to peel off like Super Glue. So it is in your interest to reinforce all your seams from behind with hot glue gun. That way, you avoid having it pop open on you when you are flexing in it or you stress it climbing a flight of stairs. Believe me, some of the most simple movements that we take for granted in our day can make your suit of armor just kind of pop open. So do this and save yourself the hassle. I've seen several videos of people in... Um, Spartan armor cosplays that didn't reinforce their stuff well enough and actually during I believe they were dancing to Gangnam style you see a Spartan's foot just kind of come flopping off So do yourself the favor as I said reinforce your pieces All right So I'm just gonna let this cool for now Off to the side here, and we're gonna talk about this piece here now this piece It's got a couple little um nubby areas right there on the side. I already mentioned that you have to trim the back here because that is going to be curved and it's going to tuck up in to the very upper portion here, that little half rounded section from our very first video on this helmet here. This has already been trimmed and since this is trimmed as well, it's designed to fit real, real nice together there. But as I said, you don't need to trim all the way to the edge there. Just enough so that this makes contact along this bit here. And since they're both trimmed, it'll make a real nice seam. Okay. Now about these two little nubby areas there, I assume that this is from the original um, Pepakura file, but that was probably meant to be a folded area there. We don't need that to be there, because after we've done this particular curve there, this has got to be able to fit inside the shape here, and that is going to hinder us from being able to get it flush. So instead of having a gap there, we're going to modify this right now. So, pretty much just grab a ballpoint pen. Where the curve thins out at its thinnest point here, we're just going to gently mark that right on in. So blend it right down into the curve there. So you're taking off that much, okay? Whole little section right into the thinnest part. And this will, uh, this will save you the hassle of having to end up doing this later. Uh, you may have to do a few passes on this. It doesn't much matter if this is chattered up on this side here because it's going to be going flush to another piece, so don't worry too hard if it takes you a few passes and looks a little gnarly. We just want that little bit right out of there. And there we go. Same thing on this side. Just the tiniest little bit. And that will allow the entire neck piece of this helmet to fit a whole lot more snugly. There we go. 
Okay. So. Let me find out where I am here. Okay. Now, on the back of this helmet here and on the sides, you can see there's this little ribby section right there. We're going to have a gap there in between ours because we have not built that tiny little piece there. That little piece is not called out inside the PDO file inside Dropbox there, so we're just going to have to make it on the fly. But it's going to connect um, right to here, and then we're going to attach it to the back of the helmet here. Doing the cheeks first is imperative. That way the back sits right where it needs to sit and doesn't sink in or uh, stay too far out. All right, and that should be good there. Awesome, that is dry. All right, so now these little curved down areas, just figure if the stairs look like they're facing up, that's the way it's supposed to be sitting, just like this here. Okay. And figure, okay. The little stair stepped area there, <clears throat> figure is going to fit along this piece here and then along that piece there. So you can notice, I'm gonna try and hold it here so you can see it, but you'll see the way it needs to fit here. Much like that. Now I'm gonna kind of squeeze this little piece of foam in the bottom there so it lines up with that bottom edge and then I'm gonna push the rest of it up to meet this whole section here. So I'm trying to hold this so you guys can see it here. Press that in. Okay, not too bad. So put the glue on the flat edge of the smaller piece. Right. And I'm gonna go with the top part of this first and walk the shape in. Just push in from the bottom a little bit on the other thicker area there. Press in. You know what, before I do that, pull it away quick. I just forgot. One thing, don't stick it down just yet if you have already, pull it away. Forgot, we're gonna stair step that. So I'm actually gonna come just a little bit up. So I'm gonna go about a 16th of an inch higher than that edge there. That way it's got this cool little depth added to it. I should have mentioned that earlier, apologies. So just same thing again, a little bit of glue right here. And stick it to this edge. There we go, much better. All right, smooth this bad boy in there. There we go, excellent. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side there just to kind of get it set where we want it to be. So again, putting glue on this piece here. Going about a 16th of an inch higher than this edge. So turn it if you have to, get it set, and press it on in. There we go. Boom, just like that. Smooth that in there. Okay, now you can see this shape wants to fight us, okay? It's got this all this kinetic tension built inside of it there, which we want, because that's gonna help to pull the back into place for us. So now, as I showed you before, that little stair feature there, I'm gonna get this set where I want it to be, and you're gonna notice here, it's gonna kind of pull the foam, it's gonna stretch it a little bit, so watch this here. See how it stretches it up like that? Gives that neat little look there. That is gonna play in well when we put this piece, because that curve is gonna be able to line up inside there. So, let me pull this out of your view for just a second. See where I'm gonna stick it, and... Okay. So now, another thing to bear in mind when you're gonna be doing this back piece here is you're also gonna be coming a little bit higher on this edge here like we did over here. You're gonna be coming about a sixteenth of an inch higher, pretty much right to the edge of the lip of the upper part of the helmet there. So figure out where you need it set. If you have to mark it with a pen, do so. Um, I'm inclined to do that a lot, but it's hard for me to show you this here. Okay. So it's pretty much gonna sit just like that. I'm gonna pull this out here, put some glue inside there, stick that piece in. So one second. And all right, here we go. Try and hit that corner right in the center. And bam, there we go. Just like that. 
Okay, it will smooth out that little bit of glue that's inside there. Reason that we're stepping that off a little bit there is because it gives you some more depth. Get some really cool shadows going inside there for your black wash or your chrome wash there. It's going to have a real cool look. So that's what it's looking like right now. Go for that look. Okay. Now I'm just going to real quick do the other one on this side here. Real fast. I'm pulling it out of your view for just a second, but don't worry. I'll be right back. So that we can add on. Just figure you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Pull it up about a sixteenth of an inch higher than that spot there. And I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it attaches. See? Right there. Same exact thing. Right in that little spot there. Thankfully, this video is filming in 1080p, so you should be able to zoom up on it and still have some pretty solid clarity. Be able to see right where it's coming together. Just like that. Okay. So now, pretty much the entirety of the structure here is totally sound on the sides. And you might want to go back through with hot glue. I can reach that pretty easily with my hot glue gun at the end of this build, so we'll just save time right now. I'm not going to reinforce those, but if I were you, I would go back through and reinforce all your seams as you're going. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Now here's kind of the cool thing about this helmet. So when this comes together here, these little nubby spots there, you want those to protrude a little bit. You don't want those to be flush with the back of the helmet. The only part of this back of the helmet that you want flush is that little half round shape there. And since we've already trimmed this here, this will sit right nice and easy boom just like that on top of it so to be a real cool shape let those two little kind of nubby sections stick out because if you look at the back of chief's helmet from the game there are two little vent sections there which i've just added little foamy pieces little ribs there to simulate the vent so you want that look all right so what i suggest to do is hit this right dead center first and then walk the shape around one side, walk it around the other side. So I'm gonna press this here, right where I know I want it to be. And once you figure out where you want it to be, take a pen, mark your center, that way you know it's not gonna slip. So just do a little line. You know when that line lines up, you're right where you need to be. So I'm gonna do this half of the edge here first. Just like that. Find my center and press and walk that shape right around that curve. Just press and hold a little bit. You may or may not get some glue bubbling out the edge there. If you do, awesome. If not, don't worry about it. You can always come back through with a little bit on the seam and just smooth it in. Give it a nice, pretty look. That's one thing I love about working with Loctite is you get gorgeous seams. You don't have this globby, hot glue running all over the place. So that is, if that isn't one of the bigger reasons to go with Loctite, then I don't know what is. Okay, same thing on this side now. Just kind of pull the piece out a little bit like that. Run some glue right down in there. So, pull this aside a little bit here. Perfect. All right. Same thing, we're going to walk that shape around. And this time, we did get a little bit of glue bubbling on the edge. Just hold it for a few seconds first. Make sure that piece adheres, and then we're just gonna smooth that glue in. So, that is good. All right, smooth it down into that little groove there. Make it look pretty. There is the back upper section here. As you can see, it pulled that, that shape that was kind of popping out, it pulled it in nice and tight for us. So now the, the next section here is gonna do even more to round out this helmet. So, since I, since I showed you before, we have those two little spots there that are kind of uh, popped out. You want them to be even. So what I like to do is, whichever one is sticking out further, that's my base to start with. So I'll put that one down first. Make sure I push the other one out a little bit further to match up with it. Stick them both, because you want that continuity all throughout. So I'm just going to mark real fast. Let's see here. Okay, cool. So it is going to look like this on the side. 
Okay, the very side, that little, that first little jutted area there, if you can see on the green helmet here that I've got, see how that's tucked just under the lip of the helmet there, about an eighth of an inch past? That is all tucked. The very back nub, though, that is what sticks out. So tuck in all that side, walk it around the helmet, and then let that stick out. Don't let them both stick out, otherwise your helmet's going to look very strange. So I'm going to get that set where I want it to be. And then I'm going to kind of press up and in to the helmet a little bit, just kind of tuck it up in there. So pull it out a little way so you can see it. I'm going to hit glue on this edge and that edge. I may only make contact with a couple of these spots here, but that's why you're going to reinforce with hot glue later on. So you can fill in your gaps. So I'm going to put some here, some there, and some over here. All right. Push this in. And just like that, okay. Once you get it set, just give it a nice press and hold. Ooh, I got some glue on my fingers already. And beautiful. Oh, that looks great. Excellent. Okay. And you can kind of see this little itty bitty window right there. Just fill that in from behind with some hot glue or even from the front there. Just make sure you use the iron part of the hot glue gun to smooth it in. Okay, so now this little nubby spot there is, it's a good spot for it there. So we're just gonna put a little bit of glue right here along the seam of it, a couple little dots of glue, and just kind of smooth the glue right in along that seam. You don't have to push it out much further than that. And as I said before, you kind of let the side that's extruded a little bit further be your guide because then you know what you can push the other one out to do. So like we did on this side over here, we're gonna stick this side in first. Okay, right there. Perfect. Okay, so again, pull it out a little ways so you can see it. So just move that out, all right. A little bit here, all the way around that shape. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. Hopefully I'm not getting in my own light and pressing it in. Once you got it to the depth you want it to, just push in up against the top of that helmet and let it hold. And that should be just about right. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. So now same thing on this side here. Just going to pull it up a little ways. Press down so you've got this firm little seam there. Dot some glue along it, smooth the glue in. So just a couple little dots, just one, two, three, four. And we'll smooth these in. All right, now you're gonna have a couple little little pin holes where light's gonna get through. Again, hot glue from the inside, fill those in. Okay, so our shape now, you see us here? We should be able to get this on our head right now, pretty easily. See if I can show this to you. All right, just like that. You can kind of see the back there a little ways, I don't know if you can see right there. But right, right about there, you're gonna already start to feel, okay, that's where it's gonna sit on my head. So it's imperative that you make these folds just the way that is there. Otherwise, it's not going to hug your neck properly here. All right. Now, for this piece here, I'm going to actually going to grab my template piece here because I'm going to show you. I believe I modified mine. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to throw you guys off at all. One second. Okay. So, see that shape there? This is the way this shape is called out. Where that black line is there, that's called out like that. That's a very, very thin area, okay? If you look at that, you're not gonna have a whole lot of space if you go off that, that little marked area to cover your neck. Now, I extended mine down just a little bit further than this piece here. You can see the thickness here. That is what I did to my helmets, a little bit longer. Don't go quite that far because I've got a really long neck, so I can lean my head back. Um, for anybody shorter than I am, who's not as tall as I am, if you lean your neck back, the bottom of that will make contact. So this helmet won't work for a lot of people. What I did though, is I just took another piece of cardstock, put it behind here, taped it down, and then I went from the corner here, 
Okay, so it's this little spot here. It's got this little tooth there. I went from that tooth to that tooth and just made a real gentle curve all the way across. And that's how I modified that piece right there, okay? Left the top here, just trimmed along the back like I showed you there. That's all you're gonna wanna do to modify this piece here, just to give enough to cover the actual back of your skull. Otherwise, it'll be about up here and it won't cover the back of your neck like it looks in the game. So I would encourage you to modify your shape as well. So it has just a better look. All right. So, I'll show you what we're gonna do here. This piece is going to attach over here. And watch this here. Now, it's got a weird little shape to it. We're going to be pressing this in all the way around the shape. So if you can see here on this helmet, Find a good spot to show you here. We are going to be going. Okay. It's going to be tucking inside of the piece we just put there. So it's tucking in almost three eighths of an inch in some spots there. If you can see right where I'm showing you here, it even tucks in along this side here. But it's going to go flush with this piece here. So it'll flush in, and then you're going to start to tuck it back. So it'd be about an eighth inch here gently 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 further and further and further in that way you get some of these cool jutted areas so don't worry about um don't overthink it just know that you want this part here to line up with that edge there and then start to tuck it and press it into place there the time you curve it all the way around you should have this nice little overhang in the back so first and foremost we're going to go ahead and curve this piece here so i'm going to heat the whole thing up i'm going to bend it way further i'm going to bend it to about like that okay That should give me right about enough to work with. Okay, here we go, curving it around. So, about like that, hold it, just to make sure you wanna go a little bit further than you think you're gonna need to go, because the foam will try and fight its way back out, <clears throat> as any of you that have worked with EVA foam before can attest to. So go a little tighter than you need it to be, let that cool down, and once it does finally cool when you let go of the shape here, it will pull itself out a little ways, but it's not going to completely open up. This will at least give you enough of a curve to work with the neck piece, or the uh, upper, excuse me, lower skull piece. So let's see here. Perfect. Right about like that. Got enough play inside there where we can work with it. Now we're going to heat these side pieces up here and give them just a little bit of a bend in to match up with that cheek section there. Just a little bit. Do be careful with these heat guns here. All right, I worked in a garage for a while there, working on very hot engines, so I can grab this right away and it doesn't really bother my fingers. This is very hot though. I can feel the heat on my fingers. If you're just starting off, you're not gonna be able to do this. So please be careful, take every safety precaution. If you're younger, please make sure you've got an adult watching you work on this because I would hate for you to cut yourself or burn your house down or lose an eye, any number of horrible things. So please be careful. Right. So just a little bit of a curve like that there, gentle curve, same thing on this side. And again, as I've said before, you do not want to melt your foam. If you can really smell the fumes on your foam, you're heating it too much. I mean, if you get just like the first little gentle whiff of the scent of the foam, you can kind of smell it almost baking. You're right about good. If you can really, really smell it heavy, you need to ease off because you'll start to melt this here and you can, that'll actually stick to your fingers and it really sucks if you get melted EVA foam on your hands. I can attest to that and I've got several of my buddies that can attest to that. 
Okay, so nice little curve there. This whole thing here, so you can see the way it's the way it's kind of pitched back a little bit. That's going to really lend itself well to fitting inside that helmet area. All right. So as I like to do, I like to hit both my sides first. Find where my center is going to be. So I'm going to hit this side, that side, stick the center, and then we're going to walk each side around individually. That way we make sure that if we stick the side here and walk it around, by doing this both sides in the center first, we save ourselves the hassle of accidentally sticking it here and then walking too much of it around and having it not line up on this side, having it be too much or too little. So stick both sides first, middle, that way you've got even on both sides. It's not gonna be a hassle trying to like walk a piece of rope around. So I can show you here. You're gonna have to push this foam in to make it line up with the bottom there. So what I'm gonna suggest to do is find where the bottom, or find the uh, the top part here, attach the top first and then tuck the bottom of this in to make it line up with that. So I'm gonna pull it out of your view for just a second here. And you want this edge here to hit along the bottom of your light box there and line up with that piece. So I'm gonna put some glue along, right along here. this edge there okay. and remember this piece here is going flush into this one here so I'm gonna pull it out of your view for a second I'll bring it right back so you can see where I'm putting it make sure I'm getting in the right spot okay so I've got it set already now press in here the top part of that make sure that shape lines up once you got it set press and hold let that sucker meld in there. Beautiful. All right. Smooth this glue down along it. Excellent. We're going to get a tiny little gap in the bottom. We're going to fix that right now. Just a little bit here on the bottom corner. Okay. Press that in. Hold it here. There we go. Awesome. And smooth it up in there. One hold, baby, hold. There we go. All right. So there's that one section there done. Doing the same thing on this side. I'm going to try and do it this way for you so you can see a little bit of a different angle. Again, I'm just going to pull it out of your view for a second here so I can see where I'm hitting this. And I'll bring it right back, I promise. Okay. So hit that bottom in there first. Oops, come on. Okay, press the rest of the armor in or the uh, side fin in there. Get it so it lines up. Let it hold. Smooth that glue in. Hopefully I'm not obstructing your view here. I apologize if I am. I'll show you what this looks like here once I clean this little spot up. There we go. There's that one, and there is that one. So you can see the way that little curve that we did, that little heated curve, really lines up well right with that side here. So now, Find your middle, it's pretty easy to do. See where those little points are there. You can pretty much go equidistant from the center on both sides, figure out where it needs to go. I'm just gonna pull it out of your view for a second. Mark where I want it to be. That way I know. Let's see. I am going to... Before I go any further, what I'm going to do, I'm going to modify this shape right now. I didn't have to do this the last time around, but this is a thicker foam here, so I'm going to modify it a tiny little bit. I'm just going to trim that corner there and this little corner here. Just taking that little itty bitty bit of that corner off there. So give me one second here. Let me trim that real fast. That will actually help it sit a bit easier on the back there. Now again, that little corner spot there was probably a folded area on the original Peppercore file 
Now, since we're doing Evacor right now, a lot of the folds just don't line up, so you have to modify them sometimes on the fly like this, which is kind of fun. Just know that if you modify it, there's a real good chance that you're the only one to ever do it. So, it's a unique feature all its own. And let me get this set here. I'm sure you're where it's going to sit. And you've got to kind of push the back in to meet it. It's going to sit like that, okay? See that little step over there? It's going to sit just like that inside there. I'll show you this one here so you can see, again, that little bit of a step right here. That little lip that hangs over. That's what we're going for. Okay, let me mark mine. And then I'll show you the walk around process. And turn it there. Okay, now as I said, you've got to push it in a little bit here and this is going to round out the side of the back here. So figure out where you want it to set and I'm going to encourage you to hit this section here first, try and get that whole thing in one go, and then worry about the little uh, corner sides there. So we'll do, <laughs> we're going to do, yeah, all right, we'll put some glue right here. We're going to sit this about an eighth of an inch onto that piece there. So, pardon me as I tuck this in here. And once I got it set, I'm just going to press in and hold. And boom, there we go. Give it a hold there. And as I've said before, the piece will try and fight you. Okay, this is, I'm working with half inch EVA foam right now. And it is very, very tough stuff. If we're doing a helmet, it's awesome to do, but it fights you a little bit more than 3 eighths of an inch foam does for obvious reasons. It's much more rigid, but it's really, really solid stuff to work with. Doing a, a chest armor with this thick stuff, man, it is durable. Okay, so... Alright. Like okay, I'm going to hit this little corner here now. Pretty much I'm just going to tuck that little spot there, right up and under, just a little ways. Again, I'm trying to follow along the shape that I've already got here, knowing that this little nub needs to stick out a little bit further. So I want, right now I've got about just over a quarter of an inch overhang. I want that over here as well. So I'm going to tuck it right about there. So guys, I, I really hope this video is helping you guys out a lot. I hope it is informative. Please, if you have friends that are working on suits of armor, pass this along to them. Uh, don't withhold info from them if you've got it. Um, hoping to help as many people as possible with their own armor cosplay endeavors because I know that when I was first trying to find videos to make my first suit of armor I could not find a whole lot of helpful stuff I really just could not and so I decided well if I couldn't find a video I was just gonna make a video for what I couldn't find to hopefully help the next person in line and lo and behold here I am a couple years later doing it for <laughs> Doing it to pay my rent. So look at that. Okay. And same thing on this side. Pull this out a little ways here. A little glue right there. And keep a paper towel handy. Because you'll have to clear any clogs that get on your super glue bottle. Again, another hazard of working with the with the medium, but it's very, very good stuff. I swear by it. Okay, check out that seam already. You see that nice little overhang there? And it gives a real cool look to that neck. Isn't that just beautiful? Okay, so now that we have the center done here, you see the sides, they still want to fight us a little bit here. But we know that since this is flush there, right there on this side here, we're still going to be tucking this back and in. So if you think, think of it like a ramp, okay? Right where, this, right where that flush spot is there, if you kind of walk the shape back, don't just go straight and pull it down and make it look weird. But give it a gentle, a gentle kind of, um, I guess, incline or decline, however you want to look at it. Get it set where you think you're going to want it. And then we're going to be pressing this shape down and in. So if you need to pull a little bit, you want this curve pretty much like that. You want that to follow that curve there and then fit the back here. So I'm just going to pull it out of your sight for a second. Get mine set where I want it. Okay. And since I'm pulling my foam 
backwards a little bit, I'm going to mark where I pull it to. That way I know what I need to line up with. So give me half a second here. I'm going to mark this. Okay. No, that little line is going to line up with this little spot there. So see, it's only about a sixteenth of an inch I'm pulling it back, but it's just to flatten out along there. So again, I'm going to find a slope about like that, where it starts really thin, widens out to almost a quarter of an inch there. Pull this out of your view. Pull a little bit of glue right here on this edge to that first corner spot. And I'm just going to pull it back, get it set, and press it in. And just like that, that's where I want it to sit, right there. So smoothen that glue because it's kind of bubbling along there. Just spread it out if you get a little up. I kind of put just a little bit more on there than I needed to, but it's all right. Just work with it, smooth it along. Use the excess to kind of reinforce the piece. And, all right. So now, same thing along this curve here. You're just gonna press it in. Now you may have a little tiny little gap right in the corner right there like I'm gonna have here. Just fill it in with hot glue at the end. No big deal. Um, and Okay, so again, pull it out. And at this point, the piece is telling you where it wants to go because you've got the back middle here attached and you've got the side attached. So now, you don't have to push it in or pull it out, just press down. Press right where it is and you're gonna see it's just gonna kind of slope itself in. It's gonna look real nice. So I'm just gonna do the whole length of this corner edge here, right along it, and press it in. Boom, just let that bad boy hold. And... All right. Smooth it right along. Now obviously there's gonna be some details that you can add to this piece here later. I've got one little detail piece that I'm gonna show you in a bit. Um, there's of course tons more detail that you can end up adding to your uh, suit of armor. I love getting the most out of every single detail that I possibly can. So I like to add little accent pieces all over my stuff here. You don't have to do that. If you don't wanna add the accent pieces, then don't. It's make it your own. Just have fun with it. As so long as you're enjoying what you're doing and you're being creative, that's all anybody can ask for. I'm just gonna pull this out of your view again and mark my spot on this side. And again, we're just doing the same exact thing we just did on the other side here. I'm just gonna pull it over here so you can see it this time. Pull a little bit of glue right along there. Point it in about a quarter of an inch. Over and stick. Boom, there we go. A little bit more than that. Actually, no, it's good. That's good, never mind. It worked out just, just fine. Okay. So now here, same thing. I mean, this one's kind of pulling itself out, so I'm just going to match it up with the same on the other side here. I'm going to figure out right where I want it to sit. About like that. Get some glue on this here. This sucker is almost done. Apologies while they pull this out of view. I'll bring it right back, I promise. Okay, right here. Just past a quarter of an inch there. And tucking it in. You can see that glue kind of bubbling along that edge. Just give it a few seconds to hold, let itself get set. Once that glue sets, keep some pressure on it and smooth this in. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Awesome. All right, next section, back skull section is totally done now. You can see how it rounded out the shape of that helmet. Before it was kind of pitching out to the side, now it tucks itself all back and in there. Gives a real, real good look. Has this cool, sexy little overhang spot there. You can put your vents or your little um, Cortana slot for her card there. But you notice we still have two little little divots right inside there. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can just kind of look at that shape there and kind of eye a piece that you think will fit right inside there. And you can just put it in so you've got this little bit of an overhang there. I didn't do that. I kind of matched that overhang there. Um, 
it wasn't called out on the shape at all because as I said, the bottom piece here did not line up so it sat real nice and snug up against here. So for the sake of this video, you know what? We are going to make a cool little step in. So we're gonna make it so that this little thing there has a cool little ledge and we're gonna recess a piece right inside that little spot there. So I'm just going to grab me a piece of scrap here. Okay. Now one of the easiest ways to do this, this is one of the easiest ways I've found how to do this, Put the piece in from behind so it's kind of filling that gap there. Take a pen and reach down inside there and kind of trace along the interior of that shape there. And that'll give you a rough idea of how you want it. So I'm just going to kind of go right along the edges there. We'll pull it out and look at it and I'll see if that's going to fit. Okay, cool. So roughly a shape like that little piece there. Now what I am going to do though is I'm going to cut it just a little bit bigger than that shape there because I want it to kind of fit inside there and wedge in like a little puzzle piece. I want it to kind of fill the gap in. So this is going to be real easy. Just cut about a 32nd of an inch past. If you don't know what a 32nd looks like, grab yourself a, a graphing ruler. It's got all the cool points and measurements on there. So we'll do that. Just a little ways past. Now that piece should fit in there real easily. Let's see. Show you what I'm doing here from the back. Put it in from the back side, it's easier that way. You gotta kind of squish it in there. Oh, sexy. Beautiful. And you got this cool little step down inside there. You can probably see a little better right there. Now, you don't have to do that like I did, like there. If you want to try and match it up with this top piece here, by all means do so. Extend it back if you want to, cover it up with a foamy sheet or not. Totally up to you. That's just the way I decided to handle that little piece there. So I'm just going to go ahead and make one more to match that for the other side. And I'm going to eyeball this one here because I believe in myself. And we're going to, let's see, I'm going to draw it on like that. I bet you it. Uh, I bet you it works. Let's see. And get used to making adjustments like this on the fly. I do this all the time when I'm working with foam. I'm gonna stick it in here. Get this piece. Yes. Look at that. It did work. Buzzing. All right. Cool. So again, just. I just filled in that little gap on the side there. Has a pretty cool look actually. I like that recessed look because it has that neat little stair step from this piece. Kind of walks in really cool. So to get that to hold, just take your glue again, put a couple little drops. I usually hit the corners. And then get one of your smoother pieces and just kind of work it back and forth inside there. You just pretty much want that glue just to hit the edges. You don't got to go crazy hard with it uh, because you're going to be reinforcing, as I've said before numerous times, reinforcing all this from the back with your hot glue gun. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side here. And this helmet is almost done. Apologies as I pull this again out of your view. I know I'm the worst. Oh. Let's work that glue right down inside there. And I'll show you this here once I finish getting this all set. I'll bring it back to you. And here we are, that piece is set in there. Now, here's a little detail piece that I like. Okay. So you see that little ribby piece that's just kind of standing off just a hair. That's just a little detail piece that I decided to add to my helmet. Now it is inside the games. If you look at his helmet, it does have that cool little shape there. I don't exactly know what it's for apart from looks. I don't know what the functionality of it is, but I put that there as well. Pretty much what I did was I just took this sheet here, the one that I modified, took a foamy piece, and I figured, okay, where am I gonna have this set at? I kind of ran it along this, that little, the original seam. Used this just to kind of measure along and then freehanded the rest of it. So that's what I came up with. Just a little piece of uh, 16, uh, yeah, 16th inch thick foamy. You can find the bigger sheets of it at Michael's or probably at Hobby Lobby. You can probably find them too. 
You can also find the packs of the multicolors at Hobby Lobby, Michael's, or even Walmart has them. So, I'll find out where this is going to go. Okay. Let me set it real quick. Just make sure I know where I'm putting it. So I don't lead you astray. And... Yeah, I like it right there. That's going to be cool. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So as with most of the other stuff, once you have it set where you want it to be, I like to mark on both the foam, the foamy piece where my accent's going, and the foam itself. Do like that so you know where the top line is going. And I'm just going to stick this piece here, and then I'm going to walk this one all the way around the side there. So stand up again. All right. Right. Sorry, head's in the way. Okay. Here we go. Press and hold. There we go. Nice. Okay, now we'll just walk this around here. So, I'm going to try and stick it. I'm just going to push it up into the base over here. So, I'm just going to pull it tight, put some glue on the edge here, and just pull it tight. So. Your battery is low. Hello? Um, What's it say? I can't say. See? Well, I'm, I'm almost done. I've got probably 30 right. seconds left. Thank you, though. All right. So pull it around. And... Here we go. That side down. All right, I gotta play beat the clock now. Try and outlast this battery. I'm just gonna stick this side here because you just saw me do that one. So give me half a second here, and I'll be bringing this back to you momentarily. All right. All right, there we are. Just a cool little accent piece to add there. Add some depth to your shape. Um, it looks really cool when you get that painted and just those extra shadows that are inside there. Hey, baby, you mind hitting stop here for me in a second? You mind hitting stop here for me in a second? Let's see. Um, all right, guys and gals, thank you so much for checking out this video. That there is our finished, constructed Halo Mark VI helmet. So we just built all this in today there. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for staying with me on this awesome journey. We'll be back next week with a visor video and many more to come. Again, if you haven't yet already, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. My name is Angel Legend. Take care, Spartans.